learn how to draw portraits of famous people in pencil. For the absolute beginner, by Paulo Lopez de Leon and John Davidson. Table of contents. Introduction. Drawing materials. Rendering. Sphere cone cube cylinder. Lesson about light. Application. Outlining. Rendering parts of the face. A eyes. B. Nose. C. Mouth. D. Ears. E. Hair. F face. Drawing and rendering. A. Katy Perry. B. Thomas Edison. C. Queen Elizabeth II. Semicolon tips to remember. The last step-by-step -step demonstration. Author bio. Introduction. A portrait, as we all know, is meant to tell something. It could be an achievement, position in life of one person, and simply how he lives that he want others to see him with his delightful expression. That may also mean that it is a representation in a form of drawing, sculpture, photography, or any artistic form of oneself in still time. It's his utopia. An artist who makes a self-portrait knows this, since he is always moved by his passion that stimulates and drives him to make his masterpiece. The artist that I'm referring to is not just me, but anyone who have the artist spirit in them, especially you. Yes, I repeat, you, as you pick this book and read it, you would take a big step to become an artist. You will be in a journey of finding yourself, and you are in a right direction. Things that you need to pose as are dedication and perseverance. Also, I have to include. You have to get motivated, and one key that I have to share to keep your creative side to work is to get an inspiration. It can come from any form, conscious or not. So always be thankful to our Creator God and our universe for it provide us what we need, the artist spirit. This book will help you achieve realism in doing your drawing, especially portraits. Believe it or not, you will be amazed of your accomplishment. Also, people who are close to you will be impressed, who know you will be making a living out of your portrait drawings. Which I presume, and I will be happy to hear from you if that day will happen. Drawing materials, pencils, the most important tool, made from graphite with a mixture of clay. Soft pencils like B have little amount of clay or not at all. Used for outlining and giving texture to your drawing, comes in different scales: H, hard, F, HB, and B, soft. Varying grades like 9H, lightest to 9B. Darkest range. For our drawings, we need the following: 4H, 2H, F, HB, 2B, and 6B. But if you're short of supplies, you can use HB only. Just apply pressure when you want a darker tone and light pressure for light tone. Mechanical pencils. Like pencils, the lead is also made of graphite. Good for details. Come in handy, especially for tight areas. The difference is it doesn't need a sharpener if the lead breaks. Just press the cap on the end of the pencil, and it's good to go. It comes in different sizes: 0.2 millimeters to 5.6 millimeters. For our drawing, 0.5 will just be sufficed. Erasers. Needed eraser. This is like a clay or putty eraser, which can be molded to any different shape and thickness, depending on your needs. It can lift graphite in the paper without any damage. Good for tight areas. Can lighten areas in your drawing, and used for making highlights in your drawings to make it more realistic. Need to be replaced if it is already dark due to accumulation of graphite. Vinyl eraser. This kind of eraser does not smudge the surface of the paper. It can erase hard and tough areas totally, especially for large areas, and does not harden. There are other types of erasers like pink eraser. Typewriter erasers and peel-off type eraser. You can also use those, as it depends on the availability of the materials in your area. Feel free to experiment what works best for you. Sharpener. There is manual sharpener, wall-mounted sharpener, and electric pencil sharpener. Any type of pencil sharpener will do. Just make sure that it is safe to use. Spray fixative. These are available in spray cans. It will make your drawing fixed to the paper, so that it will not smudge into a professional looks. They come in matte or gloss finish. Better to choose a trusted brand and a non-yellowing. Smudge sticks. Used to blend your drawing. Smear one tone to another. This is the only time you are allowed to smear your work. When making even tones, 
especially in facial areas. You can use fine sandpaper to make polish the pointer, when it's ruined. Paper For our drawings Bristol paper will be used, they come in board and pads 2 ply, the front has a plate surface, a smooth finish and has an eggshell texture, while the back has the vellum surface texture, I use the vellum surface which is good for shading. Ruler and template. Ruler helps you draw straight lines, measure distance, you can use plastic or wooden for our drawings. Templates can be used to draw circles or ellipse accurately, especially when drawing the parts of the eyes, which demand a good form of shape. Rendering. I know you are eager to make your beautiful masterpiece now, and I promise you that you will after you learn how to render, this is the part that will make a big difference as an artist. So be ready of your pencils, kneaded erasers, and smudge stick for our lecture. This is our value scale this will help us select the right tone. You can make your own value scale to have a reference, take note that I blend, using the smudge stick, to the right, so that you will have an idea, how will it look like. Sphere On the right side is our guide, of what pencil to use to the following tones of an object. Light source is coming from above. Cast shadow 4B, it is the shadow cast by the object, depending on the placement or location of light, it's the place where no presence of light can be seen. Reflected light F, it's a bouncing of light up a reflective surface at the exact angle at which touches the surface, like in our example the light hit the table then reflecting with an angle to the sphere. Reflected light is important in any drawing, because it also adds realism to it. Shadow 2B, it is where the light source cannot reach, and always opposite to the light source. Midtones HB, 2H and 4H, it's the place where the transition of light is evidently present, that is why we will be using different grade of pencils for this, our orientation for this is from dark to light when rendering. Highlights This is the part that we're going to use the white of the paper or a kneaded eraser if ever there is a presence of tone from shading. Step 1. Draw a circle using your 4H or 2H pencil. Use your circle template. For the cast shadow use your ellipse template. Draw a line in the middle of the circle. This will be the table. Step 2. Erase the unnecessary lines. Step 3. Let's start rendering the cast shadow using 4B, as this is the darkest part of our drawing. Remember that we're going to render this from dark to light, building up the pencil lines gradually up and down matching the value of our example. Then blend the cast shadow using your smudge stick, it is better if you only use this smudge stick for this tone alone. Step 4. Using your 2B pencil, we're going to draw the shadow. Do shading strokes around the ball, and remember to leave some space below it for our reflected light. Step 5. Next is the reflected light. Use F pencil, apply shading stroke below the shadow, same as you did in step 4. Step 6. Working with our midtones, we will be using HB, 2H and 4H. Starting with HB apply stroke above the shadow. Then with 2H above the HB stroke and also apply light strokes in the upper part of the inner circle. Do the same using 4H, just above the 2H below, and also apply light stroke below the 2H above. Starting at the upper part blend the 4H tone, going upward then downward, to 2H tone, your stroke will be the same like when using pencil. Do the same with the rest, start blending from the 4H tone to 2H then HB, slowly and gradually, for the shadow with 2B tone, and lightly blend it upward to HB. For the F-tone, reflected light, blend it starting from the left side going circular to the right side not to have contact with the 2B tone. After that, clean your work using your eraser. Now there you have it, you now learned how to render the sphere. Tips If you accidentally blend or erase some dark tone, just redo it with your pencil lightly. Use your pencil to fill any uneven light spots and for any uneven dark spots just lift it with kneaded eraser. Cone. 
Step 1. Copy the shape below. You can trace it if you want or you can draw it by drawing a vertical line first and a short horizontal line. Use an ellipse template to draw the base, and use ruler for the slope starting at the top of the vertical line going to one end of ellipse. Do the same to the other one. Step 2. Begin shading the cast shadow, 6B. Step 3. Then apply 2B to the shadow area, also F to the inner circular area of the base. You can extend the F-tone till the top but do it lightly, your stroke would be like following the circular shape of the cone. But don't shade the right and left side near the slope that where our highlights will be. Step 4. Now for our midtones, on the line where we shade the 2B, apply shading starting with HB lightly, overlap the 2H tone also the 4H, to the same to the other side. Careful, leave some space for our highlights for both sides. Step 5. Now let's blend everything one at a time, starting from F at the bottom, start your stroke at the left moving to the right till you reach the top. Careful when blending with 2B tone, not the smudge much. For 2B to midtones, slowly blend the 2B to HB, 2H and 4H going to outer side for both sides. Make sure highlights can be seen, so pull out the highlights using the kneaded eraser in that side, also just between the 2B tone near the tip, erase so that it will look evident. And draw a line at the back of the cone. Cube Step 1. Copy the cube outline, you can trace or do it manually, you have two. Draw the line 30 O on the left and on the right both sides forming a letter V, draw three lines vertically, one on the left end of the V, right end and center, on the top of it is another V shape connecting to inverted V shape again, forming a diamond shape. Step 2. Start shading with the cast shadow, in this example, the cast shadow on the right side is darker than the back side, that's because the light source came from the left side giving light to it. Step 3. Apply the shadow, 2B, and also the reflected light, F, on the lower part of this side. Step 4. Add the midtones HB, 2H and 4H beside the shadow, also shade a portion of HB below the front side. Step 5. Shade the front side with 2H till you fill the half of this side, then switch 4H and fill the rest. Step 6. Slightly shade a small tone on the right side at the top. Step 7. Blend all respective sides accordingly with smudge tool. Cylinder. Step 1. Copy the outline or do it manually, parts are composed of two ellipse and two vertical lines. The light is coming from left side, so the shadow would be at the back opposite the light source. Step 2. Begin shading the cast shadow, 6B, at the back. Step 3. Next apply the shadow, 2B, take note of the roundness of the cylinder shape. There will have a two shadow running vertically as seen in the illustration. Lightly apply F on the left side of the cylinder vertically beside the shadow. Step 4. Work your midtones, beside the two shadows, starting with HB, 2H and 4H. Do it also to the other side of each shadow. Apply also these tones on the top of the cylinder. Step 5. Blend the cast shadow and shadows with the midtones, Careful to leave empty space for the bands of highlights, we have three. Blend the top as well, and we're done. You will wonder, why we need to learn all of this, what's the connection of this shapes on the human face? Let me explain, the sphere shape, we usually see these in the face, eyes, ears and nose. The cone shape can be seen in the nose, from the nasal bridge to septum. The cube shape can be seen in the mouth, cube one elongated turn to rectangular shape, and teeth. And if your drawings have arms and a finger, that's cylindrical shape, so take note that upper and lower extremities is cylindrical. Lesson about light. As you can see in the illustration, this is how you will likely render portraits, 
shadows depends on the source of lights, also your very own observation of shadow from their respective shapes, will help you in your drawing in achieving realism. Remember that value of tones changes as the object moves away the light. Application Outlining Before we start rendering, we need to draw the outline of our subject. If you can draw it flawlessly in just a few minutes, that's good and I admire you, as a gifted artist, but if not, well don't worry we have solution to that, and I will teach you. There is a system called the grid system, which was used by a German artist named Albrecht Dürer. He created this device to assist artists when drawing details, also by this he can rescale his work. We don't need that device, what you will just make a grid measure half over the picture of the subject, and draw a desired inches of grid on your paper, same squares with picture of the subject. Draw lightly the outline in your paper the copy what's on the grid from the picture. Also I have to mention it would be better that the picture was a photocopy or scanned. Not to ruin the original picture. Rendering parts of the face. A. Eyes. Let's us start the eyes, as it's the window of the soul. You can start making an outline of the eyes, use the grid above copy it in your paper. After that erase the grid you made in your paper, and we will begin. Start with the pupil, it's the inside circle of the eye, the one in the middle, shade in with 6B, since it is the darkest. And also apply 6B lightly around the iris, the circular structure next to the pupil which is responsible in controlling the pupil. Use your circle templates when adjusting the outline of the pupil and iris, to make them more real and perfect. Apply HB next to the 2B in the iris, remember not to apply a tone in the catch eye, it should be blank. Blend the tone in the iris with your smudge stick, and darker the line, upper lashed, above the eye with HB, the lower part, lower waterline, with 2H, also shade the crease just above the eyelid with HB. Next would be the eyebrow, start filling the outline with little hairs. Take note of the thickness, for this example we will use 2B, your stroke would be the same as the direction of the hairs and its consistency. Blend the eyebrow with your smudge stick. Redo the hair stroke again, till it gets darker. Lift some highlights on the eyebrow, to define some light areas, also apply highlights on the catch light just beside the pupil. Tips When drawing the eye, remember to use circle templates, so that your drawing will look perfect. Also take note about for the distance of one eye to another eye, front view, there should be one eye that can fit between the eyes. Remember that eyes have catch light, especially when making a portrait. B. Nose Remember how we render the sphere, the nose is composed of three sphere, take note of where the light source from, so that you can place the shadow correctly, and also where the highlights will fall mostly on the bridge, tip and side of the nose. Let's begin, draw the outline using the grid method, after that erase the grid, start applying the 6B on the darkest part which are the nostrils. Apply shadow, 2B, just below the nostril, on the side of it and also below the tip. Shade lightly in F below the 2B, below the nostril, for the reflected light. Apply mid-tones on the wing side of the nose, a la, using HB, overlap the tone 2H and 4H to define the shape of the nose. Now blend the mid-tones and shadows, after that apply highlights on the tip, and wings. C. Mouth. Before we render the mouth, I have to remind you, when making an outline, draw it lightly less pressure, so not to darken the outline. Also take note that the upper lip is darker than the lower lip, because of the highlights present to it. Copy the outline on your paper, erase the outline, and let's begin. Starting with 6B, shade the darkest part, which is the both end of the lips inside the mouth. Shade the shadow below the lower lip using 2B, apply F above the upper lip. And the bottom of the lower lip, location of the reflected lights. Using your HB, Shade the upper lip, starting from the left end going to the right, working with gradient effect, change to 2H, then to 4H when near the middle is seen on the illustration, shade the other end of the upper lip with HB lightly going to the left. 
For the lower lip, starting from left end shade with HB going to the right. Stop when you're near the middle, change pencil to 2H lightly shade going to the right as seen on the illustration. Continue till you're near the curve, change to HB again shade till you fill the end. Take note, that the middle portion with the 2H shade will be the area with highlights. Define the outline of the teeth using your 4H, and 2H for the upper gums or uses your smudge stick remember never to outline the teeth with darker pencil, it will look unpleasant to the eye. Blend the HB tones, to the upper and lower lip. Lift up your kneaded eraser, to make some highlights on the lower lip and also on the teeth. Tips, study the parts first before rendering. D. Ear. When doing a portrait, always watch the placement of the ear, the distance and proportion to the head, the guidelines for this is the top of the ear is in line with the crease, the line above the eyelid, and the bottom part which is the lobe is in line with the nasal septum, the part of the nose below the nostril. Let's start, copy the grid, transfer to the paper, and erase the grid on the paper. Shade the cast shadow with 6B, just below the ear. Apply shadow shadows, 2B, see illustration. Shade F on the lobe near the cast shadow, 1, next work the mid-tones of the ear, starting with HB, apply it on the areas of the ear, see illustration 2, note the gradation of tone shifting to 2H and 4H on the areas, blend it, and apply highlights, 3. E, hair. The hair is unique when rendering, as we see different races, they have different color, texture, including hairstyle, because of cultural differences. I suggest observing and studying the hair of your subject, before you begin rendering. Start with a piece of paper, not the one you're working with, and try to copy the hair and practice rendering, before working to your drawing paper. By that you can eliminate any mistake and your work will be clean. Below is the hair outline of our subject. Transfer this to your paper, and we will begin. Subject have a curly hair, we're going to draw the hair, by using circular strokes, using 6B, for darker hair, and 2B, for dark hair, try switching with these pencils, let your eye be the judge, which pencil to use, as of this time your eye are sensitive to values, because of our previous exercises and time we spend working with it congratulations, and how tones differ from another tone. If you don't feel confident doing with 6B, try drawing with 2B first, and then use 6B afterwards, just to be safe. Continue to fill it. Now using your smudge stick, blend it after you blend it, notice there are areas that just lighten, shade the area or add hairs again to fix it, see for any irregularity at this point before you finally apply the highlights. F. Face. We're almost near to completion, we are through with the eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and hair. When shading the face, our previous lesson lesson about light, will be your guide to where you will shade correctly. Aside from observing and studying the subject face, you will have an idea where to start. So as for our subject, President Barack Obama. You've been drawing him for the whole time, you should be proud of yourself and feel great with your achievement. Again, congratulations. You might ask, why did I break every part down? That's because I want you to focus with each part first step by step, and not to overwhelm you. I have to mention also that when doing the face, we will match the skin tone of our subject, by adding more shade to the feature. I will discuss it more as we go along. Let's see our work so far. So to continue, let's start rendering the cast shadow, 6B, which is on the neck area. Apply F under the chin, and shade 2B for shadows. Work the midtones using HB shade areas next to shadow and also define some areas using this pencil. Also, I add the mole near the nose on the right side with the same pencil. Again shade the same pencil to make it more darker, and after that, use the 2H and 4H. As what we see here, the skin need more tone, so we have to increase the value of the pencil, use 2B and overlap the area by shading it, add the highlights. Now the skin are more realistic. Let's finish the rest, the suit with 2B, and 4H for the background, as you can see the image pop out, because of good contrast between the foreground and background. Drawing and rendering, A. Katy Perry. Let's do this exercise, the subject is a beautiful lady with long hair, 
and bright eyes. Note, I included maps for tones of the outline, so that we will have a guide to where tone will be still or change. Again, copy the outline to your working paper. Starting with 6B, let's shade the cast shadow next to the shadows, beside the left eye, below the nose and the lower lip, also shade the neck as there's a shadow, also you notice I started working the eye, use 2B on the upper lash, also shade the eyes with this pencil, the bright eyes was done, by shading HB on the iris, then blend with your smudge tool, after that, using your kneaded eraser lift some tone around the iris lightly, as you can see it looks glossy. Eyebrows were done with our previous technique, just don't overdo it or shade it with much 2B, as the subject has a light complexion. For the nose lightly apply shading on the left side, to define the shape, using 2B, also shade the nostril. Shade the upper lip with 2B, as the woman lip is darker. Start adding mid-tones, HB, 2H and 4H, near the shadows and also 2H to the left side of the face, since the light is on the right side on the top, also add more details like eyelashes, and also add enough tone to the lips. Blend the tones and apply highlights. Time to render the hair, we're going to fill the hair by using long strokes with 6B, darkest, and 2B, darker. Good effect can be done by building drawing strokes one hair at the time on areas like band of light on the hair where highlights seen. For darkest hair try to make broader strokes using the side of your pencil to shade, then blend with smudge stick and reapply shading again for loose or lightened tones. Refine some shapes by shading, observe the band of light on the hair and its transition, from light to dark, and add some highlights on the face, lips and right side of the neck. Then add details of the clothes and shade the background. Don't forget to sign your name under it, that's the mark of the true artist. You may spray fixative and frame it. B. Thomas Edison. As we know he is famous of inventor the light bulb. Now we're going to light it by our skill, so copy transfer the outline in your working paper, and start. Cast shadow with 6B to all designated parts, see illustration above. Shadows were added using 2B. And F under the chin. Add midtones, HB, 2H and 4H. Texture was added by making small pin-like strokes, A, under the lower lip, under the lower lash and chin. Add highlights. Shade the suit with 2B and HB, also the ribbon, shade the background with. 6B entirely, don't blend yet as you will use your kneaded eraser to make some hair lines, as the subject has white hair, then blend the background, be careful not to lose the hair. Now spray your fixative, and after that you can frame it or put it in your portfolio. Queen Elizabeth II. Let's draw and render the queen, below is the outline. This is another challenge, so make it good. Grid, copy, transfer, erase. Start with cast shadow, eyes and accents. 6B. Next, shade the shadow, and begin defining parts. 2B. Apply midtones to every part HB, 2H and 4H. Blend and add necessary highlights. The hair on the right was first rendered using the used smudge stick, use kneaded eraser to make hair line, on the left side draw some hair using 2H. Add details to the necklace of the queen, remember how we render sphere, now it's a good time for you to apply what we had learned before. I use mechanical pencil when adding the detail, also don't forget the earring. Notice the flower at the left side, on the top of hat. Well a little imagination will do the trick to render that, begin with basic shapes, add or block some shading, make some details of a flower also don't forget the puffy flower on the right side, and add highlights for the finishing touch. Don't forget to spray your fixative. Tips to remember. You must have a clear copy or photograph of your subject. Sometimes some parts in the photograph are blurred, and it's hard to distinguish, in that case, use your imagination. It's not bad, to pick up some magazines and newspaper, and find a picture you want to draw and also interest you, since they have good and clear picture. Secure yourself a good lighting source when drawing. Shapes. Take note of transition of values, especially midtones HB, 2H and 4H. Remember different textures have different technique or strokes, that you need imitate when drawing. 
If you find some parts of the face, difficult to draw, break it down to smaller components. When doing drawing watch the eyes of the subject, as it convey emotion, which will help you when giving your drawing good expressions. It helps if you have reference in handy or take photograph, so that you will have a guide when drawing and shading, especially if you're confused of the shadows and cast shadow in your drawing. If you are already good at drawing and rendering, using the pencils that I mentioned, try to explore other pencils with different grades, and see what works best for you. Also try to explore other kinds of art, as much as possible. Constant practice drawing and rendering really helps you to succeed. The last step-by-step -step demonstration. This is a classic portrait of a little girl, as you can see I did this the way as the rest of the exercises. The white hair of the little girl was done using the kneaded eraser against the background, and the curly hair on the left side was made, using the technique when rendering the cylinder. I include the outline below, now try it yourself without my direction. I believe in you and you can do it. Thank you for reading. Author bio. Paolo A. Lopez de Leon. A self-taught portrait artist and digital illustrator, experience in painting and drawing for more than 15 years. His works in various media like pencil, charcoal, gouache, watercolor, acrylic, airbrush, oil and digital painting. He lives in Laguna, Philippines.